I hope everybody can hear me in the in the back there. And as Eileen said, I am Scott Seaman. I am Dean of the Libraries here at Ohio University, and I'd like to welcome everyone to Alden Library and also welcome you to this session of Authors at Alden. And it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Uh, Pascal Yao Young. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Young is Associate Professor of Multicultural Music Education and the Co-Artistic Director of the Ohio University African Ensemble, which is a group dedicated to teaching and preserving traditional African music styles uh, of music and dance. Dr. Young also directs Azagno, did I get that close to right? Azagno, a multi-ethnic ensemble that focuses on research, preservation, and performance of African, African-American, and Caribbean styles of music and dance. Before teaching at Ohio University, Dr. Young also taught at West Virginia University, where he served as the director of the World Music Center and African Music Studies, and also at the University of Ghana, where he was principal music instructor and the director of several ensembles. As a, as a specialist in sub-Saharan music and dance and an advocate for multicultural music education, Dr. Young has presented in 30 states and in 15 countries. His new book, Music and Dance Traditions of Ghana, History, Performance, and Teaching, as well as a 10 DVD set, Dance Drumming Ceremonies of Ghana, was released in September 2011. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Young in his discussion on his book. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming. And uh, it's just not the same thing you are talking about the so-called music of Africa without actually seeing the performance because Africans actually perform their music. You don't talk about it. <laughs> That's the most important thing. You go to a village, you want to learn, they try to put your pen and paper, come and participate. You learn through participation. That's how I was able to write this book for more than 15 years, learning all these dances, the drumming, the song, the languages. Because if you're not able to do that, you're not going to do an armchair researcher, go and sit down, put your cameras on them, the audio, no. That's not going to work. First of all, I would like to thank you all for coming and to especially thank the authors and my series committee for the invitation. It's been a very long journey trying to figure out the best and appropriate way to document the musical arts of Ghana. The task I gave myself uh, maybe more than 15 years ago, maybe, maybe 20 years ago, maybe 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> when I started school, you know, my father was uh, an organist, Christian, uh, Roman Catholic. So growing up, you have all these Western instruments. Violin is my favorite instrument. Clarinet, all those things. And they kept on using the word music, music, music. And we all started using the word music. But when you ask the villagers, you go to the villages, and you're trying to equate that term with what they are doing, that was so difficult. Again, I want to emphasize and say clearly today, there is no word for music as we know it in Western languages. All the African languages, they have words for almost a lot of things, but not for music. You got to ask, music is more than what we hear. Music is the dance. You go to some villages, I went to a chief palace, and there was a mask, like class of 1951 on the wall. And I started to ask him questions. It took for five hours 
for them to talk about that mask. But they told me before they speak about the mask, they have to perform it. Because the name of the mask is the name of the dance, is the name of the festival, is the name of the drama. So what is music? Is the music the mask? Yes. Is the music the drama? Yes. Is the music the festival? Yes. So as I travel around Ghana for more than 15 years, these four ethnic groups that I talked about uh, in the book, music is the name of the festival. Music is the name of the dance. Music is the name of what? The mask. Music is the name of the drum that was being used. So the concept of music as we know it in Western cultures doesn't belong, doesn't belong to, we're talking about African traditional societies. There is no word for it. So what are we calling African music? Anybody? Yes? The event. Uh -huh. <laughs> so to us, it is an interdisciplinary activity. You cannot, it's like a bowl of salad. I'll be telling my students, <laughs> when you have a big bowl of salad, you go downstairs, bacon center, you have some carrots, some, what is it, guacamole or avocado. All those things are, once you mix them up, that is African music. You cannot remove the avocado from that bowl of salad and still call it a salad. <laughs> so you cannot just go to Africa today to study about the dance, to study about the music, the visual art, and say, oh, I'm a dance professor. Teach me the dance. It's not going to happen. You're not learning the whole thing. Oh, I'm a percussionist. Teach me the drumming. It's not going to happen. Oh, I'm a visual artist. You're going to watch some videos. The costume is as important as the drumming. This dance, for example, by my have talked about it. All those dances, they're all what? Males. They're all men. Dressed like what? Women with lipsticks. We fake something. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they're all men. But that's the reason why they're dancing. That's the reason why they're dressed like women. If you know the history. Now, before I actually talk about the book, six years ago, I nearly gave up. So it was just getting too expensive. And the baker found, hey, Bobka, that's good. <laughs> They gave me some money to complete this project and to, find, to go for all the materials. So somebody said, hey, you have to do this. She always said, that's our lottery. Stop playing lottery. <laughs> Stop playing the mega million. Finish the book. And without that person, there's no way I can have this book today. So, I'd like to thank uh, my wife, Dr. Zama Baria, <laughs> for all the support. <laughs> and also, we have uh, fellow faculty staff and students, Newton Butler, Sylvester Young, Steve Howard, Daniel Wenham, Kote, Nata, several of them, for their support. Now, my presentation will be in four. Part. The first part, I want to give you an overview of the book and then the DVD. Then we'll talk about my goal, why I actually embarked on this project. And then for students, my approach, my research method. Usually we are told you want to research, do a literature review, read all these books. I did the opposite. But people say, what a minute! Because most of the books I was reading, they were not doing the job. Something was wrong with almost all the books I was reading about when it comes to African music and dance. And then we have questions. And then we'll be focusing on one of the dances, my favorite dance, Bamaya. The book covers 22 musical styles or dances 
from the four major ethnic groups in Ghana, the Akan, Ebe, Dagbamba, and Ga. Those are the four major ethnic groups. Discussed in the book are not only concepts of music, dance, and performance in general, but also cultural perspectives about the arts. Performance practices, form and structure of these accordant ceremonies. They are like symphonies. First movement, second movement, third movement. Some have what? 12 different sessions. But when we go to the archives here and then the music building, they've reduced all those African things to what? Two minutes, three seconds. I say, wait a minute. If I want to play Beethoven's symphony, an orchestra, you are going to say, oh, for this presentation today, we are going to play what? The first movement of this symphony. But when it comes to African time, oh, this is this dance from this village. That's a second. <laughs> that is not a dance. Because it's a ceremony, even body libation <coughs> is part of that performance. Some of the dances, without the prayers to the gods, they are not going to touch the drum. It's part of the performance. But for the Western stage, oh, don't waste your time, body libation. Uh, that is devil, no, devil, no, 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 no. <laughs> because Africans, those who perform these dances, they believe there is a connection between the living and the dead. You have to invoke the spirit of all those who participated in those dances. You have to make sure they come to celebrate with you. Also, I provided the history, the geography, the social background of all the groups and then the ethnic groups of the people who perform these dances. And I realized that most of the terms in Ghana, because of the British influence, British colonization, they've tried to work. Instead of writing the traditional characters, languages, they want to write everything in English. And I changed that in the book. This is how the people pronounce, this is how they write. So I make sure I use the traditional, uh, well, unique characters of the various languages. And as a guide to multicultural or global education, that's a teaching method, that's a curriculum. So any teacher can take this book and teach all those 22 dances. With the DVD, you're going to tell you what, the children or the students into the villages. These are not staged. This is the village where this dance was created. So for the 22 dances, from the history that I gathered, I went to those villages. So you actually see the scenery, the type of buildings you find in northern Ghana, and this is how they perform. And in addition, I've included numerous photographs, maps, and scores, musical scores. There is no way you can find a way. I don't know how you can describe this dance movement. You know, somebody just reviewed the book over 35 pages. Have you seen that before? A review of a book, 35 pages? <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> it's like another book. <laughs> and after reading, some of the students read the book and said, don't worry, this person just pissed or is that annoying? Because, I don't know. Why? Because I didn't use her notation. She calls it green notation. Like lava notation for African times. How many people are using lava notation in this building, in this school, to learn their dances? You can read about them, oh yeah, technique, but the students, professors are there teaching them how to move. Lava notation, mm -mm. but I'm being penalized, <laughs> crucified in this review for not using lava notation. This is the lava notation. <laughs> See the villagers? perform, and that is how they do it. 
So my way of helping you to know the movement after all the descriptions is to actually take you to the village. So teachers will be able to show the kids, oh, this is Bamaya, this is the history, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's go to the village and see how it is performed. So I prefer this medium of notating. What is notation? This is a form of notation. So I, I, I believe that instead of doing the diagrams for the dances, I use this uh, 21st century way of notating. So my next point is why this project? Why the music and dance traditions of Ghana? Why the DVD? For years, from my education, elementary school, high school, middle school, training college, to the university, I've realized that most of the books, over 90%, were not written by Africans. When it's time to talk about African arts, foreigners. And those written by Africans, and you know, you have to be politically correct. You have to use the Western terms. If not, nobody's going to look at your work. So, ethnomusicologists, music, they went and focused on this dance. For example, there's a book on that. Right now, we are looking at what? Singing, dancing, drumming. But they wrote their book, almost 99 pages on so called music, and a paragraph describing dance. But that's not what you saw in the village. You saw both drumming, dancing, singing. Dance professor, dance ethnologists who go to Africa, they will focus on the soul movement. Forget about what? The drumming, the visual arts, and everything. So I realized that we have to find a way to correct this. When you see a performer like what? A Broadway show, like a musical, you talk about everything. The acting, the so-called music, everything has to be talked about when you're talking about what? a Broadway show or a musical. Number two, I realized that those materials, as I said, they only focus on what they're calling music. In other words, organization of sound, the drumming, and forgot about the rest of the stuff. Number three, the terms that they use to describe these activities were just not adequate. They are trying to use the Western terms to describe all what they saw in the village. And number four, I realized that we don't have a, actually a curriculum to help teachers. We have multicultural education. Almost every school we go now, all multicultural music. But we don't have the materials for the teachers. So I actually laid out a one week curriculum, a month curriculum, a whole semester, a whole year so teachers can actually teach these dances. So from the beginning, my goal is to find the appropriate, respectable, respectful, and academic way of capturing all these experiences in the villages. Most important thing, I want this book to be used in Ghana and outside Ghana. You'd be surprised that you go to our library most of the books on African music, Ghanaian music, are not in Ghana. Why? African musicologists, they've written all these things, but they're not thinking about what? The people from whom they got all the information. Because they realize, oh, wait a minute, maybe they will not side with what they've written. Uh -uh. Because the terms they are using, schools in Ghana, teachers in Ghana will not understand those terms. So, the book is to the basic. This book is now the University of Ghana. They've already got a copy, only one copy. And the professor will not give it up. <laughs> so a class of 100 students, you can, OK, read page 55. <laughs> they finish the club, bring my book. <laughs> so I'm working now to make sure that all the libraries, all the schools in Ghana, the next two or three years, they all have copies. So it's not like. Because after all the material, all the things I've collected, before this book was published, I sent draft to the villages. The chiefs sat down, 
They called them opinion leaders. They went page by page. Oh, this is this correct? Oh yeah, that's correct. So I'm not ready for people to say, oh, this information is not correct. Don't go and blame the villages and the church. <laughs> because they have cross-checked, rechecked, cross-checked this information. Some of the information first in history. Now the history of Kete is a dance uh, among the Akan, the Ashantis. Nobody wants to talk about why that dance was created. Bamaya, nobody wants to talk about that, the history. You go around the 18th, 19th century, women in Dagbon, northern Ghana, were treated like what? Mm, I don't want to use the word, but that's what the word the chief used. They said Pascal put it there. The women were like, oh, inferior beings. They were treated like dead. Sorry to use that. But the chief said, record it, record it. If they kill me, fine, that's correct, it's okay. Because the way they were treating the women for two, three years, no rains. People were dying, no food. They contacted the God. They believe in all this ancestral worship. And the gods told them, well, if you want the rains, start treating women like equals. But before you do that, you got to dress like the women and dance for three days, and the rains will come. But the women will not give you their clothes. Go and make up your own. <laughs> so the guys they say, wait a minute. OK, you know the corn, maize, the husk, they use that to make their skirts. They go, go and kill a monkey with a black fur. Use that for your head gear like a scarf. Because those of the north, they have very long black hair. <laughs> So they got, you have to have that. So they have to look for what? Black monkeys to kill. And they use that for their hair. Then you have to make your own fake, I call them special things. <laughs> so you have to make, have your breast. And then they started this dance for three days, back and forth on the streets of the, of the village. The third day, the rain. So, Bamaya, the river is now full. Now we have, the valley is full. Now we have a lot of water. So that's the history of what? This dance. So up to today. But, you know, they realize that when they perform this dance, they lose their weight, more weight. Doing this for three to four hours, are you kidding me? Now the women are saying, wait a minute. This is fun. <laughs> so the women are also performing this dance. So just three days, now they say, wait a minute, we want the rents every year. So it's now become one of the most performed dance in Northern Ghana. Apart, so if you listen to, so but if you watch this, they say, what are those guys dressed like? How do they call them here? Those men who dress like women? Oh, drag queen. No, 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 they're not, they're not African drag queens. <laughs> That's a history for them. So, having established my goal, my reason for doing this project, started collecting, going to all these villages, performing with them, eating with them. And student, please, you go to Africa, you want to get the information, put all your ego somewhere. My father died at the age of 105. So don't tell me what the food they are eating, the water they are drinking, is not good for you. Uh-uh. Organic. Everything is, you know. I was growing up, there was no fridge in our house. My mother would prepare the soup fresh every day. The water, sometimes you feel like it's not good, but, well, those germs will die after all the organic stuff. <laughs> So, I didn't want to waste so much time citing all these books. So I just went performing with them, eating with them, all these 22 villages. If I give you my name on my card, you fly to Ghana today, you'll be like a god in that village. They open the doors for you because the trust is there. 
30% of whatever we are getting from the book and the DVD is going back to all these villages, just to have them uh, continue with our, their work. So I learned the languages, the songs, the dance, the drumming, and everything, because there's no way you can learn these dances or talk about these dances without actually participating in these uh, ceremonies. I interviewed several performers, elder chiefs, master musicians, more than 3,000 people. Go down and focus on one, oh, this is the chief. No, sometimes they can be, by, uh, okay, I'm the chief, so. So the chief will tell me something, I say, okay, fine. I'll go to another person. I'll go to another person. I'll go to another master drummer. Then at the end of the day, I'll put everything together, then back to the villagers, okay, yeah, that's correct. Then, I wanted to find the best way of putting these materials. But since there is no equivalent term for the concept music, because you cannot see music through the lenses of Bach, Beethoven, and Brahms. The struggle or the delay is actually finding the best way to actually capture all this event. I could have written this book about 10 years ago. I wanted to make sure the type of terms, the words I choose, would be acceptable. I'm not thinking about jazz, the words, or outside Africa, but to the Ghanaians. Because all the things I saw were all interdisciplinary. I want to emphasize that word. You cannot go and study drumming in any African village without the dance. They are connected. Because the name of the dance is the name of the music, is the name of the instrument, is the name of the festival. So how are you going to go to the village? Oh, can I learn damba? Nothing can not. Damba is what? It's a dance. Damba is what? The drumming. Damba is the name of the festival. So what do you want to learn? The chief will ask you. Is what I'm talking about? If you want to learn Beethoven Symphony Number no. 5, you all know what you're talking about. But when it comes to African cultures, because they don't have a word for music, they name their performances after instruments. So you have palongo. That's the name of the drum. That's the name of the dance. That's the name of what? The drumming. And the rituals, and the festivals, and the what? Occupations. Adahu. That's the hunter's dance. So it's named after the, what? After the, uh, the hunters. Or they're named after what? The visual arts, the mask, the costume, and the rest. Also, as observed by a British ethnomusicologist, and this applies to Ghanaian music, music is as both a social fact and multimedia communication. And there is no isolation conceptually from dance, drama, ritual, costumes, and the rest. You cannot go and break all these things into pieces. Though you're not eating salad, you're eating carrot. I want you to eat the salad and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So to enjoy the salad, you got to make sure you have everything in that bowl. So having just satisfied myself with all the terms, instead of the music, I use dance, drumming, ceremonies, musical types, musical events, musical arts, all just to capture all the activities. So for each ethnic group or for each dance, you're going to read what? The history, the function, the organization, the instrument, the form and structure, performance roles, dance, movement, drama, and objects of art. So I'm not writing as a music person. I'm not writing as a dance person. I'm not writing as a historian, but that's what I saw in the village. All these things come into play in one performance. So if you're a history professor, the book is for you.
If you are a geographer, the book is for you. If you are a visual artist, the book is for you. If you are a dancer, the book is for you. Anthropology is the book for you. Because that is what is happening in the village. You go to a performance, all these different disciplines are at work.